bit of a weird situation to kind of you know um uh, digest just from afar i guess because i think you know what it is that's kind of really making me kind of think about this virgil thing a lot more than i probably should do again because i didn't know the guy too tough we weren't best friends or anything but i had kind of observed him and kind of watched his career from afar and again as with most things when it comes to social media kind of cultural figures you do create or you do kind of build Hmm, create you do kind of cultivate some sort of weird parasocial relationship with people that you clearly haven't met through hours and hours of content of theirs you consume you kind of feel like an odd um, connection to them that's not actually really there so when they do pass it does kind of hit you a lot harder than you actually think it would because you know in reality you don't really know them intimately but you do feel like you know them intimately and obviously because of the small time i had working with him at one of my previous jobs it also gave me a kind of personal and real life context of how he is in person so that was kind of one of the concerns as well but anyway that aside it is what it is but um i wanted to quickly touch upon it again just for you know again just in terms of me sort of processing it again please forgive me if i'm just kind of regurgitating the same points i've had done in previous videos but i think considering the influence that he had and his larger than life presence and the fact that his spirit will live on amongst all of us and loads of people coming you know and loads of the generation to come actually i think it's kind of just that i kind of do my best to honor his legacy because you know unfortunately i was one of the few people who didn't take time out to honor his legacy when he was around so if that's the case then i'll try and give the guys flowers you know after he's gone because you know there is no there is um there's no time like the present in that regard but um if this brought me nicely on to heron preston who put up some really amazing posts regarding his friendship with virgil who he had a very very close relationship with he kind of refers to him as his best friend his big brother all in one mentor whatever all that's good stuff and um i have an interesting history with heron as well considering you know I, I mentioned my history with virgil in terms of my time spent working at that previous company where i was kind of in charge of co-producing a online streetwear program from our up-and-coming brands and oddly enough that course was led by virgil Abbott at the time and i just look back on my gmail just going through some emails and stuff and correspondence i had sent to myself and whatnot you know i don't think i had it in mind that i was going to hold on to it as an artifact but just kind of good stuff to kind of know you know what's funny when i interviewed for that role that i was um, applying for it was under the guise that imagine if we did a streetwear program how would you basically construct it or what would be your idea and who do you think would be the best person to lead it right that's what the basically the interview process was i had to kind of basically prepare a presentation put together a deck and basically sell myself and my kind of um ability to construct a salient or to, to construct an impactful um streetwear program that would give people value in that regard so me i went to the drawing board and i basically said who will be the best person that could kind of encapsulate um the changing shift of streetwear and fashion nowadays and back then i think that must have been 2015 i plucked virgil out of my head i was like you know what virgil's the guy even though during that time he was getting a lot of pushback from people in the streetwear you know a lot of hate for the stuff that he was doing some you know some antics that he did of course back then which were obviously really genius looking back on it like the ralph rugby shirt and all that stuff wasn't really received too well but i thought considering what he was doing considering he's kind of um joie de vivre and he's need to be surrounded by all these young kids that were just kind of picking up and doing their things i remember at that time that was when the lucas and the ian connors and all these people started hanging around him it kind of made me think now nah, this guy's definitely got his finger on the cultural pulse at the moment he's he's in tune he's in he, he's in tune on the frequency that people aren't really relating to so i put him down as a person who i think would be great for the program and i kind of basically constructed a whole course around the idea of virgil being the lead curator little did i know that they already were working on a deal to secure virgil as a lead curator in the course which is sick in it so when i did end up working on it it was like a big shock to be like oh my god shit i'm gonna be working with this guy i'm gonna be kind of helping to construct it again it didn't, it didn't happen that way we didn't have a close working relationship because of other things that kind of got involved that didn't necessarily have to do with me but i did have the opportunity to put a lot of these young brands in the same room as him in terms of mentorship you've obviously seen some of those uh, featured on my site sorry featured on my channel um you know and they've gone on to do great things they're kind of killing it high plan of course being one of the big ones that kid's absolutely smashing it now and we got the opportunity to basically place him in the same room as virgil i have given that time to kind of gain that mentorship gain that kind of insight into how he should evolve his brand 
and then kind of fast forwarding it onto the Heron Preston thing back in the day when I was coming up those guys were sort of like I would assume I would kind of relate to them as my peers or people that I was kind of looking at in terms of following their footsteps and the stuff that I wanted to do in terms of being multi-hyphenates in terms of being autodidacts in terms of being self-taught and just kind of being a slash 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 person right so the idea was like every occupation had a slash after it so you're a creative director slash artist slash writer slash photographer slash whatever event book everything was a slash basically you did everything and all things and that also came from me kind of looking up to people like aaron bondaroff right um formerly of a new york thing formerly of oh wow rec center supreme alumni now doing uh worth doing like all those things were some things that i kind of looked at with those kind of guys and because they were a few years older than me even though at the time i didn't realize i don't think i realized how much older they were um then you know of course due to virgil's un timely passing but i always just assumed we were in the same age range i didn't unsue i didn't know that they were like so much older than me at the time which kind of explains why they were so ahead of me at the time that i was kind of looking at them thinking oh my god how can i get them how's he doing that how's he doing this why can't why am i doing that little did i know that they had like you know four or five years six years on me in terms of experience so that obviously was why they were really going where they were going and kind of you know momentum was building they were all in the same place they were all sharing ideas the binge or things started around the same time it was fucking sick but i do remember back then I was obsessed with Heron Preston's blog. I was obsessed with the brilliance. Um, their their blog, I was kind of following Jound again when it was first sort of like starting. It was just a blog spot. And I had my own blog too that I was running. Um, and I was running it kind of, and I basically, I think at the time, must have copied the entire source code of what Heron Preston was doing for his blog because I liked how he put his blog together and just edited it to make it look my way. And if you not don't believe me, I actually was able to find my old blog spot on a Wayback Machine. So I was able to find an, a, an uh, entry that I did for myself in 2019, the 1st of December. There's a couple more there, I think, but this is what I've been able to find. I wish I still had it. For some reason, I decided to delete my blog spot. I should have just left it. It would have been great, like an archive to kind of look back on and dig into. But I also changed the URL. It sort of fucked it up. So now the blog spot blogger sort of URL is gone. But regardless, this is kind of what I did. And if you remember the old school Heron Preston blog you will also remember that this kind of looks very similar so i've got a massive uh, banner here where i kind of uh, coded it so that it would select from random images that i had in my folder on Flickr. do you remember Flickr? Flickr was a site where you could host images and shit we used to use it all the time back in the day and i'd kind of have a folder full of banners that i would kind of have rotating um every time you kind of refresh the page and this one this picture is actually um of my feet wearing a pair of bread jordan fours i think i got in the pack of the, that 20 free pack that sold back in the day if you remember that one i think so the other shoe was a what uh four the other shoe was what a, a nine was that a nine a jordan nine or something a jordan nine or eight or whatever yeah um it came with it but anyway this is me sat somewhere i think in central park in new york um you know drinking a a bottle of palm springs or whatever that is it poland springs whatever that is but yeah the, the basically the site was following the exact same template that um Aaron was doing and you can tell anyway because if you remember virgil's blog or virgil's tumblr back in the day had the same thing where the the titles were usually um basically the blog was the way we did it back then when we were writing blogs sometimes the titles are basically formed the entirety of the article the story quote unquote you went to write or it'll be a quote or something it wouldn't be like you wouldn't write like a title like oh this day i went to paris and then you write the entry you'd write most of the entry in the title itself and then you kind of obviously most of the images are still privated or they're deleted so you can't see them but this is also a feed that kind of rotated images that i had on my Flickr account loads of people um, loads of images of people i took pictures of in church and shit but yeah, this is my blog from back in the day in 2019 or 2009, sorry. I've got my entry here when I went to Birmingham with um, some of the BNTL guys and stuff. ID magazine buys, um, hauls from Uniqlo, like mad shit in it back in the day. But this is all kind of taken from that era of the Heron Preston times in it. So when I did see his tribute to Virgil, it did touch me even more so because I, I know from afar how close those guys were. And again, having spent some little time meeting Heron when I went to New York, I think that was what, 2015, 2015? 14 or whenever it was and seeing him around here and there um i know how close they were you know they were really really good friends um so i can only imagine how he's obviously feeling during this time but he did make some really cool post um kind of giving us an insight into their friendship and looking back at some of the key times that they had coming together i just want to quickly go over them so this first one here <clears throat> But again, I'm really, just to say again, selfishly, just for the legacy of Virgil, I'm really, really proud of this little razor 
that he did in collaboration with Rob from Early Life. Oh, no, it's not his. Okay, that, that's Heron Preston's Rob. Okay, let's just carry on. That's not the same one. But yeah, I am so proud of that though, still as well. Heron, um, Virgil did a little collaboration with A Life, with Rob from A Life, and I'm happy that I was able to, during the time working at that previous company, putting a streetwear program together, I was happy that I was able to connect them because I don't think at that time they were speaking. So I was able to introduce them to, to each other and they built a real close working relationship off the back of that time. So that was something that I'm really proud that I was able to do. But anyway, this is a post that Heron Pro uploaded of um, him and Virgil standing somewhere overlooking a canyon it feels like somewhere in LA maybe um, it says here over nearly the past 20 years I was blessed and fortunate enough to call Virgil Abloh my brother my best friend my business partner a collaborator and mentor I love you Virgil thank you for believing in me and pushing me my heart is heavy I miss you so much you are incredibly loved and appreciated this doesn't feel real the past 24 hours have been a state of shock just going on social media and I immediately break down from all the photos and memories so thank you for everyone for the messages of strength Virgil as soon as I get up there with you we're going to do back to back sets and I'll bring you a favorite order from Kuni Toroya Kuni Toroyara. <sighs> yeah, that's tough to read, isn't it, man? Jesus Christ, I can only imagine what he must feel like, man. Because again, as men, I think personally, especially in the scene, because of how kind of you know everyone's got an ego, everyone's got pride. So to finally find somebody in that scene who legitimately you can call a brother, somebody you can say you had a kinship that just went beyond, um, you know, clout chasing, something that was actually born of pure love and wanted to see each other build and grow, to then see that person unfortunately pass away too soon at such a young age of 41, it must be super hard to deal with, man. It must be something that doesn't really make sense. Do you know what I mean? In terms of trying to uh, rationalize in your head. This picture is really interesting at the end. I think that's Gerard Leto, Kanye, Jerry Lorenzo, Kanye, no, Kanye, Gerard Leto, Jerry Lorenzo, Virgil and Heron. And I think if I'm not mistaken, that must be, if I'm not mistaken, because again, I'm obsessed with fucking Vetima. That must be the Vetima show. One of the first ones, maybe 2015, 17? No, no, it might not be that. 2017? Maybe. The first one, the one of the, the most, you know, the, the one I did like in that really small, I think it was a nightclub. That must be it. I think so. But that's an incredible picture, to be honest, with all those guys. And again, more pictures of them together hanging out, doing the biz. Let's go through a couple of more of his tributes here. Um, there's a post here again, I think, of uh, of Virgil DJing somewhere, a party they were playing at. Let's see if I can play the sound a little bit for you. Oh, them going back to back actually at DJs. <laughs> And yeah, we took the, we took the or I took those sets for granted too. Do you know what I mean? As in terms of just you know seeing those guys out playing and stuff from, from time to time here and there, whenever they pop down to London, you know, you just kind of assumed you'd you'd always see it again. So you kind of pass on a few of them. There's a pit. There's a video here of them dancing. He said here in the caption, we had a dance off. I love just to be goofy together. So man. Real, real brothers, man. Real friends, real kinship. Like I said, it must be rare, man. Like, I, I know for myself, you know, how much I've struggled to, you know, I wouldn't say even find friendship because I, I generally don't try to kind of cultivate relationships. I think I've done really bad in that over my time in the scene and in general. I haven't really gone out of my way to extend my hand to anybody or to keep up with people and to check in and shit. I just kind of keep to myself, as you've obviously proved, as you've obviously seen with the stuff I post. But... It is pretty rare to be able to find someone that you can legitimately call a friend in this thing, man. Again, maybe it's the, it's the way the industry is. It's really doggy dog. The opportunities back then, again, were very slim. I think nowadays there's not probably that much um, infighting because for the most part, if you've got an Instagram and you've got a smartphone, you could essentially build your own empire without having to really lick anyone's ass. And I guess because I had such a bad time coming up and doing my thing and i interacted with a few wrong people and i made some wrong decisions and i went about things a little bit pig-headedly it's put me in a position where i've kind of been i don't know i wouldn't say i'm bitter but i've got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder a little bit tiny hint of resentment that kind of doesn't allow me to open my heart up and to be a little bit more open and make connections with people and try and build and go that way i try and just like lock it in and do it myself which obviously you can't do but you know if there's one thing I've learned about myself over time I need to just learn through just pure pain 
I can't learn through <laughs> anything else. So that's not going to change until I'm really, really down the dumps. But again, it must be incredible for them to have that relationship, to have that time again, short time. But again, it was an intense while when the relationship they were able to go from, you know, scrappy guys doing stuff on laptops to suddenly being employed by two big brands in Virgil, obviously in Louis Vuitton, Heron now with the stuff he's doing at Calvin Klein. It must be quite surreal for them both to, at the time, to pinch themselves and think, rah, one time we're out here for being, you know, catting designs online and searching for images on google and the next minute we've got an entire team working for us on these designs and shit it must be sucking fucking surreal it was actually quite cool to see actually virgil bring him in at new gods group anyway in general when that did happen to kind of back his brand and help produce it that was a sick thing to see to be honest that's definitely uh, uh, one part of his legacy again a sick picture of virgil here with his skateboard with the caption that her said can you take a picture of me real quick we've got another one too uh, it says here yeah, when we hit up Tom Sachs to work in his uh, bodega as shopkeepers this was an interesting I remember them posting this on their socials during the time too they worked there as store assistants that was quite cool you know uh, the 10 bullets of course there you know that vibe you know what Tom Sachs is about they had a really close relationship too with Virgil so I'm sure he must be crying and her and as well off the back of this <clears throat> another caption says i will miss your smile bro we had so much fun together life was always like a movie with you damn 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 yeah he changed the world he changed our lives i remember backstage before this talk i was nervous this is a picture of um heron Preston and, Vir and virgil sitting on a panel for the Horses fashion. I don't know who the lady is on the right, but it looks like they are allowed to do a panel discussion. Yeah, th this is during that time Virgil was basically wearing this as a uniform. He'd wear this like every single day. The same thing that Kanye is doing with those Balenciaga boots and that leather jacket, right? Virgil would wear a jean jacket in all black every single day of the week. It was like his basic uniform. Um, it says here in the caption, I remember backstage before this talk, I was nervous. My palms were sweaty. I look over at Virgil and he's just on Photoshop working on some designs. I literally seconds before getting called on stage, my man's work ethic was like no other. That's maybe his 10,000 hours too. Apart from being an autodidact, like the time that he spent, because every time you hear people who are close to him in terms of a design fashion thing, they always say he was glued to his phone or his laptop, designing stuff, random things, flyers, this and that, whatever it may be. So definitely... It definitely goes to show that all those year hours put into designing merch that didn't even come out, flyers, this, that, whatever, definitely led to him going on to obviously build his own brand and then of course get hired by Louis Vuitton. Do you know what I mean? So that was again one of the legacy that, that was one of the legacy that's part of his legacy. I think he's left that I think it's gonna give people, especially kids coming up, you know, um unwavering confidence because essentially he proved that you can do it that way and make it up to the higher echelons of, you know, mount rushmore when it comes or mount everest sorry when it comes to this thing that we call culture jeremy you know I and he did it you know he got hired by lvmh you know off the back of you know drawing on trainers and shit you know i mean that's a mad mad situation to be in or you know with that kind of um skill set in mind obviously there's um demna for obviously balenciaga and veterma fame standing alongside virgil and heron the next one we go along um, them two again standing side by side during the LVMH prize. And then there's an epic picture actually. This is um fashion glitterati really, the mainstays. I think that's Demna with his boyfriend, boyfriend, who's also an artist. That's Lotta, who used to be the former stylist and creative consultant, I guess, for Vetima. I think that should do Mark Jacobs of Mumu, I think. And then that's Gosha Rujinski, who has completely disappeared, it feels like. You know, he went through that time, that kind of weird cancellation period. And then I don't know what's happened to him. Hopefully there's people around him who are uplifting him and giving the opportunity to keep designing. I'm sure he, he's got another brand now, right? Is it called Packbeth or has he got something else off the back of that? I'm not too sure. But there was a time when Gosha was all over the place. He was red hot, man. And then, you know, small cancellation. And it feels like everyone kind of ditched him for whatever it may be. But this is an iconic picture. Another one, at Beverly's Juice. This is what LA Spot with Heron again and Virgil. And I don't know who the dude is in the middle. Uh, a guy called Mark Seekings. And then we continue with a, an, an amazing actually group. This is actually the, the team, the team. We've got the Bintrill boys here sat here with Nick Knight. 
Virgil, Heron Preston, Matthew Williams and Justin Saunders of Jound fame sitting alongside Nick Knight. I'm guessing at show studios, maybe sitting down for an interview. I wonder if this is out. I've not actually seen this. I'm not seeing this interview or this chat that they had um, speaking together in a circle. Maybe I missed it. I've not really seen it. And you could tell this is back in the day because no, none of them are wearing anything that they're making now. No one looks like they're rich because now they all look fucking rich as hell, innit? especially all these four. They look fucking rich as hell, especially Matthew. He's always shiny. Um, he's always wearing things shiny. He's always looking like he's in, he's, you know, he gets he, he flipping manicures and facials himself, works out a bunch, drinks, but drinks loads of green juices. This is them being scrappy, consulting, working for Yeezy, doing whatever. You know, I think maybe Heron, if I'm not mistaken, was doing stuff with them. Um, been no what's he doing was he was he working with uh hood by air i think or something along those lines i don't know what matthew williams was doing at the time but again they were all scrappy doing their own thing i mean figuring it out you can get that vibe from this picture definitely this them hanging out show studio walking down i think carnaby street that looks like again you know chilling out doing the london thing but yeah those hats with the oh man those hash those hashtag hats bruv god damn i had those sold so many of those resold so many of those man that i think that hat paid for a couple of being berlin trips again so big up the bin Trill boys for launching them and in the last post here um it says here um which a picture of virgil said the speed at which virgil could work and perform at such a high level was freakish i could often i would often say to myself how if he is if he was human i would ask myself sorry if he was human as much as i could observe his craft over the years behind the scenes there was still a mystery to how he managed to do it all he was superhuman he was also a great friend to many he also really made me want to be great of, of a friend as well i admired how he cared so i admired how he carried himself he didn't do drugs he was a responsible family man and loved his kids and his wife sharon a lot i would also I, I would always love to see them having phone calls while he would be out because we traveled so much the most responsible it was incredible how he remained focused in the midst of it all always in a good mood he listened more than he spoke he could identify your sweet spot and inspire you to put more gas in that direction he wanted all his friends to win and it was always positive vibes he always remained calm he mastered the art of saying no without saying no seriously one of the most impressive things ever lol Virgil was a warrior inside and out. He put me on in more ways than one and I'll forever be grateful. Truly the most legendary human being I've ever met. My dad said if we're lucky, exactly, it's a good point here at the end. My dad said if we're lucky enough, God put someone like Virgil in our life once in a lifetime. His spirit will live on forever. Oh man, that gets emotional reading that, man. But yeah, RIP Virgil, man. Gone but never forgotten, innit? Absolute fucking legend, man. Absolute fucking legend. But yeah, let's 